Today we're talking emergency funds and how much do you need for an emergency fund? So now, this is a very widely debated topic. There are some one financial guru that says a thousand dollars for a beginner emergency fund. After that, you grow up to three to six months. But while you're paying off debt for however long that's going to be, one thousand dollars is all you need. There are other people that think very differently. So today we're going to go over what you use an emergency fund for, what are good things to use an emergency fund, what are bad things to use your emergency fund for, how much it should be, and all of the details, where to keep an emergency fund, all of the details that we're going to go into in this video. If you're new, welcome. My name is Kelly Ann Smith with freedominabudget.com and I would love for you to subscribe and join the family. I'll also have a couple of blog posts that are related topics to this down below in the description box as well as some resources that we're going to talk about throughout the video. So first, what do you use an emergency fund on and what is an emergency fund? So I like to think of an emergency fund as something that you have in savings, a set amount of money that you have that's gonna help prevent you from going into debt. That's gonna to help to save you in case something happens and you're like, oh crap, I don't wanna put this on a credit card. I don't wanna to have to pay 20% interest on this. I have a fund that I have set aside for an emergency fund. So let's talk about some things and whether they would be for an emergency fund or not. First, house repairs. Something comes up, your AC breaks, your roof leaks, something like that, that comes up, that would fall under emergency fund. Christmas gifts, not an emergency. No, we know Christmas is gonna be December every single year. We know birthdays are coming. That is not an emergency. Now you may have a gifts sinking fund or a gifts Christmas sinking fund, but that would not be an emergency and not an emergency at all. Next is car repair. That would be an emergency. Unexpected job loss, that would be an emergency random shopping trips or something that looks really cute, like really cute and it's on sale. No, sorry, still not an emergency fund purchase. So that gives you a rundown of typically the thought process that you have when you're thinking, is this an emergency? Is this not an emergency? Basically, is this something that's unexpected? Is this something that needs to be taken care of right now? Or is this something that we can save for in the future? Or is it something like Christmas or gifts or vacations that we can put off that aren't 911 we need to take care of? That is what you need to decide for an emergency fund and if you tap into the emergency fund. Next, where do you keep your emergency fund? Now, I personally think that you should keep it in a high interest savings account or a CD. I personally use CIT Bank for our emergency fund and also our sinking funds, like we're saving for a new car right now, we're saving for different little repairs around the house. We keep those in CIT Bank because then we can earn interest on them. Now, it's not a crazy amount of interest, but it's some. And I, hey, I'd rather get $10 a month or whatever it is versus no dollars a month by just sitting in either cash or a place like Wells Fargo, Bank of America, where it's like earning 0.001%, like crazy low. So I have a link if you want to sign up for CIT Bank down below. I also have a full review on them with all the details of how they work, all of that. So definitely check it out down below in the description box. Another thing with an emergency fund is you wanna make sure that it's not too accessible. You wanna have access to it, but not too easy of access like cash, where you can just be like, you know what, we're just gonna take we're just gonna take $50 out of here. It's, it's, it's fine, we'll replace it tomorrow. They'll never know. They'll never know, my spouse will never know. No, you need to have it a little bit of a distance like a high yield savings account. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The people that are like, but Kelly, I have a credit card in case of an emergency. I'm sorry, but one of my biggest pet peeves is people, companies, credit card companies saying that a credit card is in case of an emergency. Now, trust me, I'm not anti-credit card. I have credit cards. We put everything on credit cards versus debit cards to earn the rewards, to earn the, earn the points, build our credit, and we pay them off every month. We don't hold a balance. We don't pay interest on them. But when people say that a credit card is in, in, in case of an emergency, that really bothers me because emergencies are stressful. Think about you get into a car accident or your car breaks down and that's stressful. It's scary. You're on the highway. It's, it's stressful. It's a bad day and you have to deal with that stress. You have to deal with that emergency. Imagine having to put 
on top of that emergency, the stress of the emergency, the cost of the emergency, and then the 20% interest on top of that. That is just crazy. And that to me is just 100% marketing from the credit card companies and them just trying to get you to use it in case of an emergency. No, you should have it in your account. You should have it in cash, cash is in access to you in your CIT bank account, but you should have it in your account as an emergency fund versus putting it on a credit card and then having to pay interest or putting on a credit card and not being able to pay the balance. That, that's a no go. Like if that is where you're at, I would really, really suggest to have you work towards building up your emergency fund and getting to that point. Okay. Sorry for the rant. My, what's my heart rate right now? 91. My heart is bumping right now. I am fired up. Okay. How much an emergency fund be? It's to be honest, I personally think that it's very individualized. There's so many different circumstances that go into an emergency fund. There's people like Dave Ramsey that say a thousand dollars until you paid off your debt. Baby step one is a thousand dollars. Then work on three to six months. I personally think one month's worth of expenses is a great starting point for people because it depends on you. It depends on your circumstance. I know people that make six figures and have high incomes and have high bills and high expenses. And to them, a thousand dollars is like, like 20 bucks to some people with higher incomes. Like it's just that what am I going to do with a thousand dollars? If I have an emergency in my big house with my big fancy car, it's going to cost a lot more than a thousand dollars because their lifestyle is so much higher. Or if you have someone that lives in rural America or a college student or someone just out of college, that's a lot of money, a thousand dollars. I remember when I first started a thousand dollars, dang, that was a lot of money. Like, whoo, if I could save up a thousand dollars, like I've never done that before. That was a lot of money to me. And so it depends on your situation. If you are, you know, just in college or, you know, working a part-time job, you may not need that. So really figure out how much you need, how much is one month's worth of expenses. So do a budget, figure out how much, do a spending analysis. If you need some templates and resources, I'll have some links for my budget, for my spending analysis template that does all the formulas for you. So you can figure out how much you're spending every month and then figure out, okay, this is how much we need for emergency funds. Now, this is total cost of living. This is total expenses for the month, not necessarily what you bring in. So say you bring in just for easy math, $5,000 a month, but your bills are only $4,000 a month. Your bills, your expenses, your groceries, all of that. Then you only need $4,000 for the emergency event, not the full five, because the other thousand goes to paying extra towards your debt or savings or investing or whatever it is. That's extra money that you have left over at the end of the month, if you're budgeting correctly. So have something that is that depends on you. Then also, if you have one month's worth of expenses, then that helps you to get one month ahead on your bills so that your, your income that comes in November that pays December's bills, your income that comes in December that pays January's bills so that you're one month ahead so that you're not getting down to paycheck me like, Oh crap. I have $7 left to my name. We got, we got a stretch. No, you have extra money. You're one month ahead on your bills. That's a really, really great place to get to. I also recommend building up, building up to three to six months worth of expenses. So starting at one month's worth of expenses and then building up to three to six months, especially if you have a house, if you are a homeowner and you have a house, our emergencies as homeowners are a lot more than renters because we have higher things to deal with. We have a pool, we have a roof, we have AC, a heater, a stove, a washing machine, all that stuff. We can't just call the landlord and say, Hey, my washer's not working. Come fix it. We just had to buy a new washing machine. It costs us $930 to buy a new washing machine. If we were renters, we could, we could just call the landlord and say, Hey, can you come fix it? It's unfixable for us. We can't do that. And if we were renting, they would have to replace it. We're homeowners. We got to replace it. So that's just an expense that we have to deal with as homeowners. So that is why I recommend having a house fund and then also an emergency fund of three to six months as homeowners. Some other things to think about when you're evaluating how much you personally need for an emergency fund. Cause I, even though I recommend one month's worth of expenses, it's an individual decision. It's a family decision. So you may not feel comfortable with just one month 
worth of expense. If you may feel comfortable with one and a half or two or three weeks worth, whatever it is. So you need to sit down with you and your significant other, you and your family, or just you, or you an accountability partner, or you in a budget coach or money coach and say, hey, let's look at my situation. Let's look at my plan. Is your job volatile? Like, can you lose your job at any minute? Is it like, what's your job situation? What's your family situation? How many kids do you have? What's your living situation look like? What What's going on in your life? Because what's going on in your life may not be going on in Susie's life and you have a totally different circumstance than her. What's your debt look like? What What's going on in your budget? What's going on in your, in your monthly income? That is something that you want to really look at when you're evaluating how much you need for an emergency fund. Also, if you make a lot more than you're spending, like you have a really good savings rate, then you can cash flow a lot of things. As things come up, you can just cash flow them. Like for instance, our washer that broke, yeah, it sucks that our washer broke, but we didn't have to pull it from our emergency fund. We're able to cash flow it because we have more than $1,000 left over at the end of the month that we can just pull from. So when you have different funds or different income levels, you can cash flow things and things can work differently. But like I said, if something big happens to us, then we're screwed. Okay, now some motivation. I have some printables down below in the description box that are really great for motivating you for your emergency fund. I have one that's just a blank one that you can create your own. I have a thousand dollar one if you do want a thousand dollar one. I have one that's for one month ahead or one month's worth of savings. So I have these printables down below in the description box for you that are really gonna help just motivate you while you're saving for your emergency fund or even one that's for six months worth of expenses as well. So definitely check those out, use them, print them out. I love them. Or you can use them digitally as well and color them on, on your iPad or in Canva or on your phone or whatever you want to do and just have it there so that you can track as you're saving. I love those motivators. They're so just like, all right, let's, let's save a little bit more so we can color in a little bit more and reach our goal. Whatever our goal is, I got a printable for you. Let's keep the conversation going. If you want to earn extra money so that you can reach your savings goal faster, check out five passive income ideas that earn at least $1,000 a month. And if you wanna know why I don't think $1,000 is enough, I really dig in more to the nitty gritty of why $1,000 isn't enough for an emergency fund, check out this video here. Hey, no, no, no.